please welcome Jim Keller. Yeah, welcome everybody. <clears throat> this is an example of it's good to have people, you know, who actually knew how to do stuff. I walked in this morning and it was like, man, that looks fantastic. Um, and then thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, I have a lot of material to talk about and um, I wanted to start with this. So Tenstorm's been around for a while, been working really hard on AI software, hardware, chips, systems, CPUs, and we are now a shipping company. And <laughs> yay. Oh, we got we to gotta applause. <clears throat> Makes me wonder if, would we ever do it? We're doing it. And it's really hard. It's like shipping silicon that works is really hard. It's really expensive. And the AI software stack, it looks so easy. Look at a PyTorch program, 600 lines of code. Couple matrix multiplies. What could be hard about it? 500 people, four years later, holy cats, this is hard. Uh, but we're getting really good at it. So we're shipping our Galaxy server, 32 chips in a box, scalable, scale up, scale out. I don't know what that means, but um, <laughs> apparently that's two different things. For us, it's only one thing, it's Ethernet. We hook hardware together. We ship small servers, we have two kinds. We have a loud one that goes in a data center and a quiet one that goes in your living room. There's an example upstairs of our new one. It's great. Uh, we're building PCI Express cards that go in standard enterprise servers. Today we're going to talk a lot about our IP. Our Escalon RISC-5 CPU is shipping. Our Tenzik IP is shipping. And we open source a ton of stuff. And we're really into the open source ecosystem. We open source our software stack. We support the RISC-V environment top to bottom. It's been really amazing. We have, a, we have a really simple mission. I want to make AI and silicon cheaper. Everybody draws those graphs. Every year it gets more and more expensive. The license fees goes up, the tape out costs go up, the IP costs goes up. That's not the future I want to live in. Like literally that's not where I want to be. I want to make silicon cheaper. I want to make AI cheaper. I want to make IP cheaper and easier to use. So we have an open architecture, RISC-V. I don't pay anybody a license. We own our CPU. We support open ones. We contribute to the ecosystem. We open source our Tensic processor, right? We license our Tensic processor core. The software stack is open source. The architectural document and reference model are online. If somebody wants to copy it, God bless you, go ahead, please do it. We have people using our software stack for their own applications. It's really cool, but we license that CPU. Our TensorFlow software is open sourced. We have low level kernel environment, runtime environment, big rich model environment, and now we're building a great compiler on top of MLIR. Again, software is all being developed open source. You can see it. My favorite stories is I was talking to an investor and I I said, I want to give you an update on our software stack. And he said, you don't have to. We're in there every day. We, can, we know exactly what works and doesn't work. Our plan is published. And that's an amazing difference in clarity. Like, you know what you're getting. You want to change it, go ahead. You know what the progress is. There's no secret stuff. We build high performance AI, which I call normal memory and, and ethernet. You don't need really expensive memory and ethernet. I don't know what's going on with ultra ethernet and quasi ethernet and it's marketing, it's expensive, it's incompatible, it's wrong. So we're gonna make really straightforward hardware to build and we're starting to build chiplets. We're taping out three chiplets the end of this year, early next year. We invested a lot of time and money to build chiplets. The first step is hard, but we did it and you're gonna hear about some of that today. And then once you have chiplets and an ecosystem around it, it makes it easier to build new products because you can iterate on the part you want to. You can build a new AI processor, a new CPU, a new memory subsystem, but you can reuse the other subsystems. And I think that's really important. So you're gonna hear from these four guys today. We're gonna talk about our high performance RISC-V CPU, our chiplet ecosystem, 
our automotive and robotic strategy, and then what we see going forward for the future of this kind of ecosystem. So thanks a lot for joining us today. We have a lot to show you, and we're really excited about it. It's really fun to ship products, hardware, software, IP, and next year we'll start to ship chiplets. It's pretty cool. And then we want to partner with anybody, want to do business with me, call me, and uh, we'll get together. All right, thank you very much. Please welcome Miles Duke. So at Tim's Torrent, it's not an overstatement to say Risk Five is the foundation of our products. Risk Five is everywhere in Tim's Torrent, and here are just a few examples of the the cores that we use and the places that we use them. At various places in our product portfolio, you can find our custom cores that we've designed in house, open source Risk Five cores, as well as third party IP cores in our black hole SOC. Risk Five is a rapidly growing ecosystem with a strong community engagement. And you can find a pretty good Risk V core for most applications, except for the high end, until now. So we're very excited to introduce you to our disruptive, high-performance Risk V CPU that we call Ascalon. Ascalon implements the RVA23 profile, which is a key part of the RISC-V story. The RVA23 profile defines a set of common extensions that everybody must implement to be compliant, and that's intended to ensure that there's compatibility among processors designed by different vendors. So because Ascalon implements this profile, you can be confident that any software you develop for the RVA23 profile will work on Ascalon, and any software you develop on Ascalon will work on another RVA23 core. Now, when we say Ascalon is high performance, this is what we mean by that. So when referring to the ubiquitous spec CPU benchmarks, we like to talk about it as a function of frequency. The reason why we like this is because it gives you an indication that's analogous to IPC or how much work the processor can do in a given cycle. Now, like any benchmark, this is not perfect, but it does give a pretty meaningful indication to evaluate the inherent CPU microarchitecture. And when we measure our Ascalon CPU by this metric, we achieve a score which is greater than 21 spec in 2006 per gigahertz. This is a score which is significantly better than any other RISC-V CPU you can get today. And it's squarely in the ballpark of any high-end CPU you could get in any ISA. The other half of the performance equation is frequency. And our internal implementation of Ascalon achieves 2.5 gigahertz in the SF4 technology node. Now, as I mentioned, this is an RVA23 core, which means it supports the RISC-V vector extension. However, our ve vector implementation is not just checking the box to say we can support vectors. This is actually a very high performance implementation. If you're interested in hearing more about this, you should check out some of our demos upstairs later and try to find DJ and ask him about some of the cool things we've done there. So in addition to all of the great performance characteristics, Ascalon also has support for things like virtualization, security, side channel mitigation, and RAS. In short, Ascalon is designed to be a real solution for a wide range of applications. Another thing to call out is, our, is that our excellent software team has already been upstreaming support for Ascalon into GCC and LLVM. And we're happy to share that the Ascalon IP is available now. So far, I've been talking about you know, the Ascalon as a single CPU. However, what we've really built is an entire family of CPU cores. I've been focusing on 
what we call Escalon X, which is the extreme performance or highest performance CPU core that we offer. But we actually have several different offerings which can be used to satisfy your particular performance, power, and area requirements. In addition to the various PPA cores that we offer, we also have Alexandria. Alexandria is based on the same underlying microarchitecture, but it's been extended to support ASIL-B and ASIL-D for functional safety compliance. This is intended to address automotive and robotics needs and will be available in Q3 of 2026. Thaddeus will have a lot more to say about this in his talk. So we've talked about the Ascon family of CPUs, including the different variants for PPA and automotive. And now I'd like to step up one layer and talk about how we actually deliver that CPU as part of our Ascon cluster. So our cluster consists of a number of cores configurable from two to eight, along with a large shared L2 cache. In addition to that, it includes the necessary components to actually build a functional system like interrupt, trace, debug, and security. And this cluster connects to the outside world over industry standard interfaces like CHI and AXI to make it easy to integrate into your SOC. So now we've talked about the Ascalon CPU and how that integrates to the cluster and how we deliver the cluster as a solution. I'd like to step up one layer and talk about the system IP beyond the cluster. So because we're eating our own dog food, so to speak, by using our IP to build our own silicon solutions, we actually need to have all of the IP to build real products. And this is a list of some system IPs that we offer as part of our portfolio. We provide IP solutions for the entire system from power management to debug to trace, to IOMMU, interrupt controllers, bridges, boot, and security. We're in the process of open sourcing many of these things, and we're ready to work with customers on deploying or modifying them to help with their own solutions. So now I've talked about the CPU IP, how that integrates to the cluster, and how we provide the system IP beyond the cluster. Next, I'd like to talk about all of the infrastructure and collateral that we can provide to enable developers to actually leverage all of this great IP. We've got architectural tools from our Whisper reference model and compliance tests. We can provide verification collateral with things like test generators, models of IP. We've got a range of silicon tools to help with things like functional bring up and performance debug. We've got software dev kit, which can provide things like CPL firmware, software optimization guides. We've got infra tools to enable partners to run their own flows and simulation recipes. We've got several options for enabling customers to run on emulation platforms to get that early feedback for performance and functional characterization. And we can provide a reference SOC, which customers can use to, as an example of how they could integrate our IP into their own SOC. However, there's one big piece that's missing from this uh, of how we're enabling developers. So the missing piece is actually having Ascalon in silicon, which brings us to Atlantis. So Atlantis is a high-performance development platform that's being developed in the uh, 12 nanometer TSMC technology node based around an eight-core Ascalon X cluster IP. This platform is gonna be used for software development for things like automotive and robotics partners among others, as well as an IP evaluation for customers around the globe. Atlantis has PCIe Gen 4, allowing us to connect it to AI cards such as Black Hole, and it makes it a really compelling AI and CPU solution. Atlantis also has GPU and LPDDR memory, enabling a range of possible product fits. And we're gonna talk more about this later as well. So coming back to our previous picture, 
we can now fill in that missing piece of the, of the story with our Atlantis development board. So this is, this is a pretty nice list, and most of these things are actually open source. So we've covered the CPU IP, the cluster IP, the system IP, and the developer infrastructure and collateral around all of that. We also wanted to just take a brief moment to highlight some of the places that the RISC-V software ecosystem where we've already been laying the groundwork in anticipation of today. As I mentioned earlier in the talk, our, our software team has already been pushing support for optimized, uh, optimized support upstream into things like GCC and LLVM, specifically for Ascalon. And if you want to hear more about that, you should uh, check out Mikey Newling's uh, talk in the breakout session later. And the bottom line is the software ecosystem is ready for our Ascalon processor. And of course, none of this would have been possible without a strong community around RISC-V of so many people, including Ventana, Revos, Sci-5, and many others. So today, you know, we're, we're sort of focusing on the Ascalon CPU cluster and system IP, but this is really just the beginning. We have an ambitious high-performance CPU roadmap which is gonna be built on top of the foundation that we've established with Ascalon. Going back to something Jim said a minute ago, doing the first one is really hard. Uh, but, but we've done it, and going forward, we're gonna leverage all of that hard work and, and be able to iterate and deliver so many good products based out of this. So looking forward to next year, we've got the Atlantis, you know, silicon development platform. We've got the release of our functional safety IP with Alexandria and ASLB and ASLD certified versions of the system IP, as well as the successor to the Ascalon CPU, which we've called Babylon. Babylon will deliver improved PPA with a little bit more of a focus on improving efficiency rather than on performance. Looking beyond next year to 2027, 2028, some of the things we have coming up are Cyrene, which will be the successor to Babylon, which will have a much bigger jump in performance, as, as well as the next generation of system IP and a server CPU chiplet. So to summarize the message that we really wanted for you to take away from this, TENS Torrent RISC-V CPU IP is not just about our excellent core. It's about much more than that. It's a full solution, including the core IP family, the cluster, the system IP, infrastructure tools, and collateral to enable our partners to build real functional solutions. With TENS Torrent RISC-V IP, you really do own your silicon future. And I'd like to conclude by thanking everyone for coming here today, as well as acknowledging the incredible amount of effort and hard work that the team has put into delivering all this stuff over the last few years. Uh, this was really a huge lift by a lot of people and on behalf of Divyang and our leadership team, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody on the team for all their hard work. So thank you. Thank you.